When I first started uh, teaching at uh, Wharton, I, I thought I was a strategy guy. Uh, I, I didn't know anything about uh, business ethics. I didn't know anything about the, the field or who the people were, but because I thought business and ethics ought to go together, I, I didn't know that most of the people who did business separated them into business and ethics. So I was pretty ignorant about that uh, f for a long time. Uh, I started by uh, working with some people who did social issues in management at the Academy of Management, uh, and that led me uh, to the people who did uh, business ethics like Patricia Werhain and Tom Donaldson and Mike Hoffman and Ken Goodpaster and those uh, folks. Uh, but I really didn't know much about them uh, until I would say sometime in the uh, early to mid, mid-1980s. Initially, what did you expect to accomplish? When I first started, uh, I guess, doing business ethics, um, I, there wasn't much I wanted to accomplish. There wasn't much I wanted to do because, again, um, I've always seen myself as somebody who had something to say about business. Uh, and because I'm trained as a philosopher, uh, you know, I had something to say about ethics. But, again, I didn't know that business and ethics were separated to the extent uh, that they were. I thought it was nothing but complete common sense that companies created value for customers, suppliers, employees, communities, people with the money. I, I didn't think that was uh, very radical or even really very interesting. Uh, I was trying to figure out what business was. That seemed to me to be it. Uh, and I didn't know that I had anything else to say, quite honestly. What were your initial goals and expectations? There came a time in the uh, mid-80s as I learned more about the field of business eth ethics uh, that I thought uh, we needed more ideas. We, we needed more people who were trained in philosophy but who actually knew something about business. I, I had spent five years doing essentially consulting with companies uh, all, all over the world and it was it was, it was quite an education for me because I, I didn't really know much about how business worked. But as I read uh, a lot of the material in business ethics, it became clear to me that uh, there were lots of folks who didn't know much about business who were writing about this. Uh, and so that became one of the kind of driving forces for me was how, how you put a real practical knowledge about business uh, and good thinking about ethics together. Uh, this eventually led me to work with Oxford University Press to create the Ruffin series in business ethics, which I think finally uh, there were 14 or 15 volumes uh, uh, in that, uh, and later with Cambridge University Press to, to create the uh, Business Value Creation and Society series. Uh, and later to take on the, the, the role of uh, co-editor-in-chief of the Journal of Business Ethics. I wanted to preserve a place in all of those uh, ventures. I wanted to preserve a place where people could write about business and where you could do philosophy, where you could do ethics. Uh, I saw the field going down, and I, I do see the field going down, uh, a, a kind of positivist empirical uh, a trap, and I say trap because when we get to the point where we see that's the only way to do interesting work in business and ethics, uh, I think the field will be essentially over for all intents and purposes. What did your university uh, think uh, that you would accomplish in this new role? I taught at Wharton uh, for five or six years, part 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 time initially, and then as an assistant professor. Uh, but I never taught business ethics there. Uh, I was a strategy guy. Uh, I then moved to University of Minnesota, uh, who offered me tenure, uh, and I started to teach business ethics. It was a 
by this time it was uh, like the mid 1980s it was a pretty standard course uh, that that was in the business school there I started to write more for people in business ethics since quite honestly the strategy remember I thought I was a strategy guy uh, the strategy people didn't care at all they, they didn't really care about what I was calling stakeholder theory, theory. they didn't really care about ethics uh, I'm not sure they still do uh, and so the expectations for me at the time were really just to uh, do the research I was working on uh, teach courses in business ethics. Uh, we had a PhD pro program that well, we added uh, some parts on business ethics in, into. And I was lucky to have some really uh, great students like Dan Gilbert and Don Elm uh, and others at, and uh, Venkadraman Ven at uh, Minnesota. And did your goals and expectations change over time? I've never thought of myself as, as having goals and expectations. Um, it, there was a bunch of work I wanted to do. I wanted to write about stakeholder theory in the, in the sense that business people can understand it and in the sense that uh, people who do business ethics and social issues and management can understand it. So really I, I say I, I've been a, a, a pretty resilient one-trick pony for 40 years resilient in the sense that I don't really care if people take this seriously uh, or not. Uh, it's, work, it's work I feel like I have to do. Um, and I've had a lot of support. I get way too much credit for stakeholder theory. Again, remember, I, don't, I, I never thought this was even an interesting idea. Uh, I thought when I wrote Strategic Management of Stakeholder Approach that the really interesting idea in that book was around purpose in something I called enterprise strategy. Um, no one else in the world thought that was interesting at all. Uh, and I don't think they still do. Uh, but uh, stakeholder theory uh, has sort of taken off and there are literally hundreds of people uh, doing this work all, all over the world. I, and I get way, way too much, way too much credit for it. Looking back, what have been your contributions to the field and for practitioners, what have you accomplished? If I look back and say, well, gee, so what's the last 40 years uh, been about? Um, I think I'd have to say I I've just been a voice that asks people to think about customers, suppliers, employees, communities, people with the money, and a voice that uh, asks people to think about uh, not separating business and ethics. So if I had to name those things, I would say they were stakeholder theory, for which I get too much credit. I didn't start this, and there are lots of people uh, who have done it. I just happened to write, uh, it turns out, a very citable book uh, about this. It's got uh, lots of citations. People have said to me, so what's it like to write a business bestseller? It has like 35,000 cite citations. I tell them, I don't know, because they only printed 2,000 copies, and we gave most of those away. Uh, so. Um, my take on this is I wrote a very citable book, but it's not a very readable or book that's been uh, well read. Right? Uh, and so I, I think stakeholder theory is one thing. The second thing would be this idea called the separation fallacy, that business and ethics are separate uh, and should be separate. I think ultimately uh, that's probably more important than thinking about stakeholder theory. Uh, and we'll see what comes of that because I think business as a field has moved towards, uh, in kind of the wrong direction, uh, towards more uh, pseudo-scientific uh, ideas. Uh, as a philosophical pragmatist, uh, there's, there's no contradiction between um, thinking about empirical research and thinking about conceptual uh, research. In fact, those things are always intertwined. Uh, yet we make those distinctions in the business disciplines uh, in a way that I think prevents really interesting work from being done. Of the thing I think I am most proud of the last 40 years, uh, that's easy for me. Uh, I've had some terrific students and to be a part of their career and what they have accomplished 
uh, they'll do far more uh, than I uh, ever have. Uh, no one gets to have uh, students like Dan Gilbert and Don Elm and St. Karen Venkatraman and Andrew Wicks and uh, Bobby Parmar and Rob Phillips uh, and uh, Sergei Dmitriev. And I know I've probably left some out, but. Uh, uh, so, Ed, what aspects of your career are you most proud of? <clears throat> I'm, I'm really most proud of two things. The first is to play a small part uh, in uh, an incredible number of great students. Uh, very few people get to have the students uh, that I've been lucky enough to have, uh, and I would just name a few of them, uh, uh, Dan Gilbert, Don Elm, St. Karen Venkatraman, Andrew Wicks, Rob Phillips, uh, Kirsten Martin, Laura Dunham, John McVeigh, Bobby Parmar, Sergei Dmitriev, uh, and I'm sure there are others. They, they will do much more uh, than, than I will ever do. And being a part of that is something I'm, I'm really very proud of. The second thing I'm really proud of is uh, actually the kind of thankless editorial work uh, that, that often gets uh, that, that everybody does, uh, but it, it always gets kind of overlooked, and, and that's the, the Ruffin series in business ethics, it's the uh, Cambridge series in business value creation and society. It was a short-lived uh, Ruffin lecture series for a society of business ethics, which uh, went away for some reason, and it's uh, uh, the, the work Michelle Greenwood and I have been doing editing the Journal of Business Ethics. I think that that editorial work, um, you know, is work that helps to build a field. Uh, and I know uh, Pat Werhain is uh, almost never recognized for the work that she did in starting the Business Ethics Quarterly and shepherding that through. I didn't have much appreciation for how hard that was. Uh, until I took over as co-editor of Journal of Business and Ethics. That's enormously important work and you, you have to try to build a field to be able to do it. It's not something that's ever going to get uh, recognized or rewarded um, and without it you, you don't have an academic discipline. Uh, Pat really was the, the founder of the academic discipline in in my eyes and I've been lucky to uh, be able to maybe add add to uh, what what she really accomplished. Um, I think you covered the previous question with theory <coughs> developed and contributed to the academic field. Are you good with that, Pat? Yeah. Okay. Um, what were some of the big initial questions you faced uh, in in the field? Many years ago, uh, when I was at Wharton, and I started to think about some of these is issues. Uh, Gordon Sollers and I wrote a paper called Some Questions in Philosophy of Management. Uh, it was pretty, um, oh, not embarrassing, but uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was interesting to reread that uh, fairly recently. Uh, I thought there were questions around what's an organization uh, in, in kind of real terms. The, the literature that existed on is the corporation a person uh, I found not not very interesting and not very applicable to the way people thought about business in the real world. Um, there are a lot of questions around what's knowledge in business uh, and questions that eventually uh, led me uh, to read and reread people like Dewey and Rorty uh, and Putnam and the pra pragmatist. And then there were lots of questions about um, ethics and how we think about ethics. Uh, I used to put that as what is there, how do we know, what are we going to do about it? You know, those questions I saw as questions that philosophers had a, 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 not, a not, not a monopoly on answering, but they had some skills in trying to answer those, those questions. But they needed to be answered with a knowledge of real business. Uh, and so uh, that became a sort of driving force for me. I, I guess as I've gone back to that paper, which I never 
published. Uh, I don't think we even ever sent it anywhere to be pu published. We did give it at a conference and managed to set an overhead projector on fire, and I, I, I think that was the I think that was the death knell of the pay paper when the room started smoking. And uh, so, uh, but as elementary as that paper was, I think the questions in it uh, really started me thinking about more about applying the philosophy I knew to business rather than uh, let me just try to understand these business disciplines and, and what's there, which I had been doing for. Uh, the last probably seven or eight years before we wrote that. What questions and issues do we still face today? I think we face a lot of the same questions and issues in business ethics um, in, a, in, a, in a different sense. There are questions about what business is uh, in a, a global multicultural sense uh, that uh, are hard to answer because most of our ethics that we think about derives, at least in business ethics, most of the ethical theory uh, comes from Kant. Kant never went outside of Königsberg, and you can say a lot about him, but calling him global and multicultural uh, are not two uh, uh, adjectives that would come about. There's more work being done on the so-called continental philosophers. There are people who are starting to work on pragmatism. There are people that are starting to work on feminist theory and those kinds of things, and, and those are good. So I think the, the theoretical door is uh, wide open. I was a little chagrined to see that people have reopened the what's a corporation, and it seems like they've reopened it with the same sad old arguments uh, that were there in the late 70s uh, and early 80s. Uh, there are lots of people who do ethics now, and they're trying to do it, a lot of them in a non-normative way. They're trying to do it in a way that's purely descriptive. Uh, and again, as a pragmatist, uh, I think that's just a mistake. Descriptive, normative, and, in, and interpretation always all go together. Uh, and that's... Uh, uh, a lesson I have not been very successful at penetrating either my philosopher friends uh, or um, certainly the uh, business theorists uh, that are there. So I, th I think the doors are wide open. We do have a discipline that has uh, lots of scholarly arg arguments uh, that are good. And part of the problem is people start uh, uh, with business ethics, so that's a contradiction. And they start as if they're making it up from, from the beginning. And so they don't read, I would say, uh, the 50 to 75 books that are relevant to the field. You'd never do this in any other discipline. You'd never just think, oh, business ethics, I'll start, I'll start from scratch and, and, and do, do that. So, so again, I think there's a, uh, there's a, there's a problem with that, that uh, we have to continue to train PhD students uh, to read uh, this uh, field. In your opinion, is doing business ethics a new profession? Is doing business ethics a new profession is an interesting question. Business has been around, you know, since before, you know, we lived in cities and all that sort of stuff. People have been value creations, value creators and traders for millennia. You know, the interesting question here to me is, the first question of political philosophy has always been, how's the state justified? Well, suppose we change that. Suppose the first question of political philosophy were, how is value creation and trade possible? Uh, and then we ask, so what's the role of the state? We might get some really very different answers for that. You can look at uh, someone like Plato or Aristotle. They, they both had views of business. Uh, Plato's, Plato's view, especially on leadership, is uh, extremely relevant for business today. 
um, Dominic Scott at Oxford and I are, are trying to write a book called uh, something like Plato on Leadership. And we've sort of taken Plato's ideas, his metaphors of leadership, and kind of mapped them into uh, both leadership theory uh, and some business leaders uh, of today. Uh, and it's very relevant stuff. I, I dare say, this is going to come out wrong, I know, but I dare say it's uh, almost as interesting as the leadership journals. Um, what questions about ethics and corporate <coughs> responsibility have we been able to deal with till here? If I think about it for a second, the, the questions about ethics and corporate responsibility, I, I mean, I don't think they're settled, but I think one thing is settled. Corporations have a moral responsibility to their stakeholders. I think that's pretty much a settled question. Uh, it certainly is in business. Uh, most business leaders that I know understand this. They don't always get it right. And one of the problems with the field of business ethics is we engage in what I would call saints and sinners thinking. You know, most businesses are sinners because money's bad and profits are bad, or at least that's what many people in the field believe. Uh, but there are a few good companies. And then when those few good companies screw up, they're sinners. Oscar Wilde put this best when he said, every saint's got a past, every sinner's got a future. We, we need to get out of this saints and sinners thinking. There, there are very few saints. Uh, and I don't know many people who are, who are sinners all the time. Usually when we find people that are sinners all the time, we elect them to high political office. and uh, well, That's pretty much a, a nonpartisan statement for me uh, as, as well. So we've got to get, we've got to get past that. And one of the reasons, one of the ways you get past that is you learn about what real business is. Uh, I've been to so many sessions of the Academy of Man Management uh, and Society for Business Ethics in which I, I can't think of a business person that would recognize the view of business that's portrayed there. Furthermore, certainly in the, in the, in the management field, and this, this may be true in, in ethics as well, um, I don't think there's a single CEO who's waiting for the latest issue of the management journals. Somebody going, wow, I wonder what those management professors are publishing about. That's a problem. That's a problem when no business executives really care about the underlying field of which they're a part. That's a problem for the field. Uh, now, I think they actually, even though they don't read the academic journals, I think they actually do care about some of the ethical issues that we write about. Uh, but m m m making that, that come together, that theory practice gap that's there, uh, is it really important to, to take on. I'm too old to take it on, but I hope somebody does. What issues and questions will need to be addressed in the next 20 years? In the next 20 years, business ethics ought to be a really uh, exciting field to be in. We have incredible new technologies. Uh, like, I mean, if you think about it, I've never been much fan of the of trolley problem th thinking in e ethics. But the problem of autonomous cars is a trolley pro pro problem. Um, if you think about uh, the ethics issues in things like AI, uh, you think about privacy, you think about what kind of human beings are we going to be when most of our face-to-face -face is mediated by screens? How are we going to be able to form relationships? How are people going to be able to fall in love? Uh, I think those questions about who we are as human beings in this, it, we're on the edge of this incredible uh, technological society. I don't, and Plato's still relevant. So I, I, I think there's a lot of work that that needs to be done. It's got to be grounded in real business, real technology. It's got to be grounded in a variety of thinking about ethics. And we can't keep having these 
uh, saints and sinners, uh, facts and values, those kind of distinctions, which don't help us very much.